Hi Year 6, thank you for tuning in to this week's spelling lesson. I'm going to start off by looking at the spelling shed leaderboard with you. So in first place we still have 6H, they are retaining their lead at the top of the board, well done 6H. 6R this week in second place, up from fourth place, they have done very well, so well done 6R. 6G still in third place and we have um, in fourth place 6M who have moved down from second place this week so come on 6M see if you can put in some effort on spelling sheds and get up to um, one of the leader positions this week. In, in the individual category we've got Jaden H still in first place doing an amazing job well done Jaden keep it up. We've got Freya M back on the leaderboard this week in second place and a new person Alfie has um, appeared in third place on the Spelling Shed leaderboard, so well done Alfie. Everyone else, see if you can get onto Spelling Shed this week and see if you can get onto the leaderboard for next week. Well done to everyone who had a go at the Kahoot quiz this week. I've got the top 10 people on the leaderboard here. Um, massive well done to Jacob H, Lachlan and Declan who were um, first, second and third joint at the top of the leaderboard, all getting 100%. So well done, you really um, paid attention in the spelling lesson this week. Um, look out for the details of this week's Kahoot quiz later on. So I'm going to start off this week's lesson by revising spelling adjectives to describe characters. So let's check if we have remembered our spellings from last week. Hopefully you've been doing lots of practice at home um, maybe one of your chili challenges or your spelling shed practice. So can you have a look at the different options for each word and can you select the correct spelling? So number one, amiable. Number two, obnoxious. Number three, disagreeable. Number four, grotesque. Number five, repugnant. Number six, exquisite. Number seven, courageous. Number eight, gargantuan. Number nine, valiant. And number ten, delightful. Pause the video if you need to, and then we'll see if you got them all right. Welcome back. So the highlighted spellings are the correct ones. Check them against your own and see how well you did. Well done if you got them all right. So let's check we understand the meaning of last week's words. Let's have a look in at the words on the left, our spelling words, and then some um, synonyms on the right hand side. Can you match them to the best synonym, the closest match? Pause the video and have a go. Welcome back. So I decided that the closest match for amiable was friendly. The closest match for obnoxious was unpleasant. The closest synonym to disagreeable was unfriendly. The closest match for grotesque was very ugly. The closest synonym for repugnant was disgusting. The synonym for exquisite was extremely beautiful. The synonym for courageous, you could have had fearless or very brave, either would have worked. The synonym for gargantuan is gigantic. The synonym for valiant, again, could have been fearless or very brave, very close in meaning. And last of all, the synonym for delightful was pleasant. And if you notice the challenge, looking for some antonyms, words that have the opposite meaning, you could have added on Amiable and disagreeable are antonyms. Grotesque and exquisite are antonyms. And obnoxious and delightful are antonyms. Okay, so this week's learning objective is to spell mathematical vocabulary. Why? You will need to read and understand this mathematical vocabulary for maths in year seven. You should be able to spell it accurately so that you can answer reasoning questions legibly. Um, it may also help you with um, your maths lessons at the moment. For example, 
the line graphs maths lesson. So, vocabulary that you will need. Synonym, we've just mentioned a word or phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase. An antonym is a word or phrase opposite in meaning to another word or phrase. A noun, a person, place or thing. A root word is a word or word part from which other words grow through the addition of prefixes or suffixes. A suffix is a string of letters added to the end of a root word which changes its meaning. So here are this week's spelling words. I'm going to read them. I'd like you to make sure that you can pronounce them and read them and have a practice if you need to. So we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, parallel, horizontal, vertical, circumference, diameter and calculation. You need to make sure that you've read them through, said them aloud and if you need to rewind and practice saying them again you can do pause the video now and have a go at that welcome back now i'd like you to have a look at each word and see if you can identify any prefixes or suffixes that we already know pause the video now Welcome back. You may have noticed that there's quite a common suffix sound that we um, have definitely looked at before. So we've got the shun sound. And if you remember when we looked at this in class, we have got two different spellings for the same sound. We've got the T-I-O-N suffix spelling and the S-I-O-N suffix spelling. Both of these are used to create nouns. Could be from a verb, could be from an adjective or another noun. But all of these shun words are nouns. So we've got four T-I-O-N spellings and one S-I-O-N spelling for division. Now I want you to have a look at these maths words and have a go at explaining what these maths words mean. You could explain it to somebody in your house or you could write it down and use drawings or words to explain what they mean. Your turn. Pause the video now and have a go. Welcome back. So addition, of course, is finding the total or sum. Subtraction is taking away a number from another number. Multiplication is repeated addition or adding a number to itself a specified number of times. Calculation is to work out an answer using mathematical processes. It could be a verb or it could be a noun as well, the workings out of an answer. And then division, breaking up a number into an equal number of parts. We're going to revise some of the rules next for using these suffixes T-I-O-N and S-I-O-N. So the shun suffixes. So let's look at T-I-O-N first. So the word subtraction comes from the root word subtract, which ends in the letters C-T. Words that end in C-T will always form T-I-O-N shun nouns when the ION is added. For example, subtract, the verb changes to the noun subtraction by adding ION after the CT. Reflect, the verb changes to reflection, the noun again by adding ION after the CT. And protect, the verb becomes the noun protection when you add ION to the ending CT. Can you think of any more examples where a verb ends in CT and then it can change to a noun when you add ION? Pause the video, maybe write some down.
Well done. Okay, let's look at the next word then. Again, using the T-I-O-N suffix spelling, looking at the word calculation this time. So calculation comes from the root word calculate, which is again a verb, which ends in A-T-E. We have to follow the common suffix rule of dropping the E before we add the I-O-N this time because A-T-E ends with an E. So if we look at the word calculate, if we drop the E, we are left with A-T at the end, then we just add the I-O-N to form the noun calculation. Same for educate. Drop the E and then add I-O-N to form the noun education. Same for hesitate. Drop the E, then just add I-O-N to form the noun hesitation. Can you think of any more examples where you've got a verb ending in A-T-E, where you drop the E um, and add the I-O-N to form a noun? There are lots more examples. Pause the video, have a think and maybe write some down. Well done. OK, let's look at the next spelling then. So this suffix is spelt S-I-O-N for the shun ending. So the um, spelling word this week is division. This comes from the root word divide. And we can see that that ends in D-E. We can follow the common rule of dropping the D-E before we add the S-I-O-N. So D-E changes to S-I-O-N. For example, divide, the root word, the verb, changes to the noun division by dropping the DE and adding S-I-O-N. If we just added I-O-N here, it wouldn't make sense. You'd kind of have a double I in the middle and it would sound very strange. Explode, exactly the same rule. We drop the DE and then add S-I-O-N. Because you've got that O vowel sound, you can't really have the explo I O N wouldn't quite make sense so we have to have the s in there as well same for invade the verb the verb sorry invade drop the de before we add the s i o n to form the noun invasion can you think of any more examples of verbs ending in de that we would then um, drop the de and add s i o n to form the noun there's lots more examples pause the video have a think write some down Welcome back. OK, let's have a look at some um, more of our list words. So we've got parallel, horizontal and vertical. All of these words describe types of straight lines. But can you remember the difference from when we did this in maths? Can you draw them? Or a challenge for you. Can you find something in your house with each type of line on? Oh get you to pause the video and go and have a look. Off you go. Oh look, I found a top with horizontal lines going from left to right on it. And I found a top with vertical lines that go up and down. I wonder what you found in your house. So let's check our understanding. Horizontal first of all. So straight lines are horizontal if they go across from side to side without going up or down at all. Horizontal comes from the root word horizon, which um, you can see in the picture there, goes horizontally across from side to side without going up and down at all. So the word horizon is within horizontal, and then we just have to remember that it's an AL at the end. Next, we've got vertical. So straight lines are vertical if they go straight up and down or top to bottom without going across at all. Again, we need to remember that it's got AL at the end. Parallel lines um, is next. So lines are parallel if they are always the same distance apart. We call this equidistant and we will never meet. So we remember that parallel lines are always the same distance apart and never touching. So in the examples, the red line is parallel to the blue line in each of these examples. Parallel lines also point in the same direction. They can go horizontally, 
you can have horizontal parallel lines like on my top or you can have parallel vertical lines um, which are going in the same direction like my other top but you can also have slanted parallel lines for example in example two where they are going in the same direction and will never touch there the same distance apart all the way along Okay, so the next two words on our spelling list are circumference and diameter. These words describe two different measurements of length. Can you remember the difference between them? I'll give you a hint. What does the Latin root word of circumference, circum, sound like? Have a think. So... The root word circum means round and it's the root word for circle, circus, circuit and circumference. So circumference is the distance around a circle, like the perimeter of a circle, the measurement of length around it. The diameter is the distance of the straight line that passes through the centre of the circle. I have a look at this diagram here. You can see the diameter goes right through the middle of a circle. So different meanings, both measuring length to do with circles. So I have a mini maths challenge for you. Um, for this challenge, you will need a tape measure. Um, and you will need some circular objects. So you need to look around your house for some objects that you could draw around to draw a circle. Um, if you don't have a tape measure, you could use some string as long as you have a ruler. So if you want to take part, go and find some circular objects in your house, find a tape measure or a, some string and a ruler. Off you go. We are investigating if the circumference of a circle is always larger than its diameter. True or false? Welcome back. As you can see, in my house, I found very quickly, I found a candle, I found some sellotape, some masking tape, I found a lip balm, and I found lots of things in my kitchen that I could draw around to make a circle, like a tin of beans, a plate and a glass. I wonder what you found. Okay, so I'm going to start with a tin of beans and I'm going to measure the circumference, which is the distance all the way around the circle to start with. And you can see that is just over 23 centimetres and we've got 23.2 centimetres for the circumference. I'm going to draw around it so that I can label it. If I draw around my circle... I can then label the circumference, circum being the root word, remember? Fur, and then it's got that suffix ENC that we looked at fairly recently. So the circumference all the way round from one point to the other, 23.2 centimetres. Okay, so to measure the diameter, I need to go straight across through the centre of my circle, so the widest kind of point, and measure the distance from one side all the way to the other going through the centre. So on mine, it's about 7.4 centimetres. If I draw that on my diagram, I need to go from one side to the other, exactly through the centre point, my diameter, Oh, that's a little bit wonky. Okay, but my diameter of 7.4 centimetres. Notice the spelling of diameter. It's got M-E-T-E-R, kind of like the American spelling of a metre. Okay, so we've now measured the circumference and diameter of one item. And if you want to do the investigation and see if you can prove the question true or false, you can then go and measure lots of different sized circles, small and large, and see if you think it's true or false. Off you go, see if you can investigate it. 
Welcome back. So I wonder if you proved the uh, my statement true or false. The circumference of a circle is always larger than its diameter. Let us know what you found out. Right, we've now looked at all of the spelling words this week. We've looked at what they mean and we've talked about some suffixes and we've talked about um, some of the different spelling mistakes that we need to watch out for. So I'd like you to go and have a look at this Kahoot quiz, which you can go to www.kahoot.it or you can go on the Kahoot app and enter the game pin 02181074. Enter your first name and initial in the nickname section. Um, have a go at the questions. Um, you have until... 4pm on Thursday the 9th of July and you will be able to see the leaderboard and see who um, is winning the Kahoot quiz this week. Um, good luck, concentrate hard and have a go. So your chilli challenges for your spellings this week are Chilli 1, practice the spelling words using a range of strategies, could be rainbow writing, Segmenting pyramid writing, like my example here, where I've put the um, one letter added on each time for vertical. Chili two is to do chili one, practice your spellings. And also you can find this week's spellings in the crossword, uh, sorry, the word search. I'm sending that out on parent mail um, on the email on Monday morning. Can you find all of the spellings? Chili 3 is to do Chili 2 and as this is a maths vocabulary week I thought we'd have a slight maths activity. Can you work out the Scrabble score for each of your spelling words? So in the game of Scrabble every single letter is given a different score. You can see those scores on the tiles below. For example A is worth 1 point, B is worth 3 points, C is worth 3 points etc. So I want you to have a look at each word and work out the score. So if we have a look at my example here, vertical, V is 4. So I've written that down. The next letter, E, is 1 point. So I've added that on. 4 add 1. R is 1 point. T is 1 point. I is 1 point. C 3 points. A 1 point. And L 1 point. I've added them all together in a calculation and my addition answer is 13 points. So vertical is worth 13 points in a Scrabble score. Can you work out all of your other um, spelling words this week and work out what your Scrabble score would be? That's the Chili 3 activity. There's also that printed out, um, that as a sheet attached to the parent mail as well. As always, do send us a picture or an email letting us know how you've gone with your sweet spellings. Um, and you can practice the spellings on Spelling Shed. The list is now added. Good luck. Enjoy practicing your spellings this week. And I'll see you again next week.